Hello and welcome to SK Live. I'm your host, Shanil Sadana. Today we have with us world, world shooting champion, uh, the famous Ronjan Sodi. How are you doing? Welcome to the show. Thank you for having me here. It's my pleasure. Doing all right. How about you? I'm good too. Thank you. It's been a long time since uh, we met after college, I guess. Yeah, it's been, uh, I think, what, 20 years? 20 years, yes, that's true. Been a while. So, uh, yeah, I know. How do you define um, these difficult times when, you know, sports is one of the most badly affected uh, sector along with the travel industry? What are your thoughts on that? Well, uh, a lot of people have been talking about this and, you know, this is a question which every sports person is asking, but uh, we could never foresee this. But I guess, you know, we have to live in the moment. It's not only sports, every sector is badly affected. And, you know, some of them are happy because it's given them time to spend with their family. And some of them, uh, you know, have, you know, training more in a sense on their physical fitness, on the mental. So it's about how you utilize your time. Uh, hopefully this gets over. The camps have started. I have started opening their centers and everything. And uh, they're going to be ha having national most of the sports also. International competition is yeah. also going to be starting okay. soon. So I think it, it's, it's okay now, you know. The bad time is over. Now the good time is yet to come. That's true. And you also have the maximum gold medals in the history of Indian shooting. It must have been making you feel so proud when you, you know, think about those days. Well, gold is the most expensive metal, you know, if you compare silver and bronze. So I always thought it's better to win gold than anything else. <laughs> That's true. I was just fortunate. I'm kidding, you know, but I was just fortunate that, you know, and uh, I love competing. And, you know, the final, I was a very strong shooter in the final. So I trained a lot for the final, not for the qualification, but, you know, and I used to always go with a very a focused mindset and, you know, very, uh, I mean, I was a very strong shooter. So I trained a lot. So maybe because of that, that, you know, I always used to be, the top of the podium right and also with those uh, two silver medals at the commonwealth games in 2010 and uh, the same year you won the gold medal also at the asian games well i'll tell you about the commonwealth a very funny story <clears throat> when i was entering the stadium in delhi so uh, there were guards some policemen from delhi police they said congratulations so i was yet to go and compete i said congratulations q border he said, I'm advanced to the border, you don't get any gold. So, you know, this is the kind of pressure, you know, when you are doing well, that you have to right. go through, you know, uh, you know, when you're competing at home. And you won't believe when I won the silver medal, and I, I know it was very difficult, it was a tough field, and, you know, especially in shotgun, the Commonwealth level. So people actually came and they were sympathizing with me. And they said, never mind, next time, never mind. And I was <laughs> like, here, I mean, I'm sweating it out to win a medal. And they said, never mind. So, you know, at times it's difficult for us, you know, we, we can't win every time. As a sports person, we lose more than we win, you know, and which a lot of people don't understand. Yeah, there are a lot of bad days and good days. And those good days are those glorious days. That Absolutely. Yes. Yeah, so, and how satisfying was it to defend a World Cup title in 2011? Well, see, World Cup is a season-ending uh, competition where only 12 top shooters of the year participate. And, you know, to win that is very prestigious. And to defend it is even prestigious, you know. And uh, unfortunately, in the th uh, third one, I got a silver medal. And I was only shooter in the country who had qualified for seven consecutive World Cup finals. It's very satisfying and it's a difficult field because top guys are there. It's like masters in any other sport, you know. So, yeah, it was, it was a happy moment that time. Yeah, but does it hurt sometimes that uh, you didn't win the gold medal in the Olympic uh, time, which you deserve? <clears throat> well, you, you see what's written at the back. Yes. It is always for tears. This is my office wall. So whenever I walk in, I read this and it reminds me of the Olympics. Yes. In life, it's important to know your failure or get reminded of your failure, then your success. So I'm kind of a person, I don't like to live in my past glory or my success. Because if you live in a past glory and success, you will not want to achieve more in life. So I am always reminded of my failure so that I become better. If not in sport, not other works of life. So yeah, it, it was difficult that time. And uh, my friends in the media, whom I was called the blue-eyed boy of the Indian media, uh, before the Olympics, and uh, immediately uh, 
there were articles and everything the biggest dis disappointment of the london games it was very very difficult time for me that time but nevertheless i came back and uh, i started training again and after two months is the same world cup final that you mentioned earlier there was a competition in slovenia and i went for that competition i beat the all three olympic medalists of the london games and i tell everyone if the olympics were held for five days consecutively you would have five different winners not maybe not in other sport maybe not in 100 meters you know because the same ball would be difficult to beat but definitely in shooting it's a mental sport so don't remember, i mean you must remember we have four years and maybe half a day to compete and it's a mental sport it's very difficult the lots of other things your technique your temperament your fate your luck so there are too many things involved you know but nevertheless now that is what it is right <laughs> that is true and also shooting is the second uh, sport after cricket to produce so many champions like you and abin abina bindra and so many more so do you agree to that fact yeah see well uh, i um, tell a lot of people as indians we are very good in skill sports you know cricket is again a skill sport shooting is a skill sport hockey we would always win as long as hockey was played in grass because the skill involved there you know there was dribbling today there is no dribbling in hockey the faster you run the better you are the so you, because of the turf so the europeans have taken over okay so in any skill sport whether it's badminton whether it's archery we will be world beaters now a lot of people uh, contrary to this they say why we are doing well in wrestling it's not a skill sport but we only do well in wrestling in a lower weight category it's very difficult to find a wrestler in a european country weighing 56 kg or a 65 kg you know so if we focus only on the skill sports in india i think we'll be doing really well now for that for for example you are a basketballer you tell me other than principal singh who's made you know made names and everything and he's not made like all that big a name in america tell me you think in india can win olympic medal in uh, basketball the next 20 30 40 years i'm asking Maybe. you Ooh, yes you well, can you've been optimistic here yeah? i don't think so <laughs> <laughs> because the body type and uh, genes are not such i'll ask you a question you've been asking a lot of questions why do you think mm, in swimming you have all the white guys doing well and in athletics in 100 meters or 200 meters 400 meters the black guys are doing well it's because of the genes uh, also right there you go you answered my question and the diet you and your the climate climate also but things are changing gradually things are changing you see we have been starting producing more athletes now than we did 20 years earlier right there's a reason for that because the sporting culture is coming in india there's a lot of support from the government there's yeah. there are a lot of jobs from the private sector from the public sector so people are sending the kids to go and play and there's a lot of money involved in sports now you know probably yes. sports is the only industry which has grown in the last say 5 6 years as compared to the other industry you know look at the leagues ipl is there in cricket kabaddi league hockey tennis table tennis i mean sports is one sector which is really grown you know yes so, exactly and that's that, why i'm saying that it can possibly we can possibly reach that level i mean nothing is impossible right yes but in only those sports believe me <laughs> now if you ask uh, yeah whether swimming or basketball it would take some time yeah Believe of you. course sure it slow and steady right yeah. and what we lack in india is uh, the sports science today yes. uh, the amount of money is being spent on sports science as far as other countries are concerned in india we are not doing that so we need a more scientific approach uh, sure. you know rather than uh, you know just going in going out in the field and just play that's true we are also uh, working towards that and it must have been uh, feeling really great to achieve that uh, rajiv gandhi khel ratna award tell us about that see whenever you given a award for your performance it is always good you know i thought i should have got it before but it's always a good feeling you know because not many sports person in the country get a rajiv gandhi khel ratna award so yeah it's always nice to have another feather in your cap So do you think that uh, the sport uh, ministry is more inclined to giving awards such as these to individual sports rather than you know cricketers or a team game sort of thing well this uh, if you actually see the definition of rajiv gandhi award 
it's defined to be given to individual it's it's never a team because it says and in fact this year they've given to five sports person otherwise it is one sports person has to be given this award the best in right. the country that particular year so it cannot be given to the entire team it has to be that one person from the entire uh, entire team whether it's cricket or football or anything else right so anil right. kumble and rahul dravid uh, they've done so much for cricket in their time and uh, don't you think they should have been awarded a okay, game 100% 100% 100% if they can give five this year they could have given much more earlier right that's true yeah. so and this that's year now 15 shooters have been uh, qualified for the olympics in tokyo so what do you think uh, what are the chances or how many medals do you think they'll bring see this is a very difficult like i told you i was the front runner uh, going into the olympics and you know one of the favorite guys i couldn't win and uh, last year we drew a blank you know the real look it's a very difficult question and you know a lot of people say okay five medals six medals but indian team today is the strongest right as That's compared right. to yeah so uh, be optimistic i would say uh, three to four okay let's keep our and fingers crossed yeah 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 that's what i'm saying so you you can't say but three to four should be a realistic figure and the reason being is because uh, you know they've introduced a team event Yeah. Mm-hmm. So you know, now for example, uh, Manu Bhakar in air pistol and Saurabh Chaudhary in air pistol, they both rank like top in the world. You know, maybe number two or number three at the moment, and very strong shooters, and they won almost everything. You know, whenever they shot as a pair. So I think in team medal we have a stronger chance than in individual because you never know what happens. You know, uh, in individual level, but I think three to four we should be happy. That's really good. And uh, but you know, uh, athletes. Uh, suffer this stage fright how do you think they should uh, tackle this uh, sort of a feeling you know stage fright as in when, while they're playing or yes, while they're while competing before and while you know see it comes with uh, experience mm-hmm. as as a novice you would go everybody has butterflies in the tummy you know even i did yeah. you know but as you uh, you know play more matches and you know you compete more so that uh, you understand you know what how you have to compete with uh, that uh, how you have to handle that situation so it's just with experience and the more you compete the better you get so how should they improve it how should they tackle this just more competition and i don't I, i would also say to work with a psychologist which is very very important like i was mentioning about sports science earlier i worked with a lot of psychologists and i worked with a lot of mental trainers just to understand how come this fear everybody has that. I used to be vomiting the day of the competition. I used to be so scared, you know. But then you overcome this, you know. Your first medal is the most difficult medal. Once you win that, you start believing in your abilities. You start believing in yourself. Mm-hmm. And once you start believing in yourself, you have that self belief. Then nothing can stop you. That's true in every field, I think. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Whether it's corporate, whether anything, I mean, whether you're going and giving a presentation, if you don't believe in yourself, you'll stumble, you know. Yes, that's but, true. So, is double uh, trap shooting toughest amongst the other categories of shooting? Well, well, well it's nothing of that sort. You know, uh, it's, it's all Olympic uh, disciplines have the equal level of difficulties or easiness. So, it's called double trap. So, it sounds like, oh my God, trap must be very simple, and double trap is more difficult. But no, it's all the same. It's just that we compete in different events. and they are all different it's like talking about squash is more difficult or tennis is more difficult you know it's as different or table tennis is more difficult you know <laughs> take a squash player to play table tennis he find it very difficult you take a table tennis player to play tennis he find it very difficult so it's as diff- it's different as that okay true so and what is it sorry. sorry you were saying something sorry no no interrupt. just because it's a sh- it's shooting that doesn't mean uh, it's all racket games all racket games are different so even shooting does mean all shooting uh, sports are same. disciplines are same so that that's the answer to okay and what is india doing to conquer more in shooting how are they improving the game <clears throat> well uh, the, the government is doing a lot federation is doing a lot and uh, i i remember you when i was competing when i started shooting you know the headlines in the newspaper used to be uh, no camp for shooters as there's no ammunition 
So, you know, everybody used to be talking about there is no ammunition for shooters, so there's no camp, nothing, and all that. Today, there is so much of ammunition, so many of so many camps that the shooters say, I don't want to have attend this camp, burnt out. So and I remember when we were competing as a junior, so there used to be three shooters in the national camp. Today you have 18. So there's a lot of money which has been pumped into, and the money has been pumped in from the government primarily, and the federation has also uh, you know managed the entire system in a way that the money is not wasted, it's utilized in the right manner. That's why you're winning the medals. Right. And what are you doing to improve uh, the game? Well, uh, talking to you, inspiring <laughs> people. I, no, you also I have that. I met, no, I'm mentoring a few shooters. One of them is going to the Olympics. And uh, I'm looking after the sports science center here at Manavrashna University. I'm mentoring them. Uh, and yeah, I've got a couple of ranges, you know, wherein a lot of shooters come and shoot. And we also started uh, a company called Sports Promotion Foundation, wherein we uh, take people from humble background and give them ammunition and guns and everything and we train them so whatever little i can do i'm trying to do that that's brilliant and do you think that uh, you know the corporate is having a little uh, shift in thought uh, to promote uh, players other than cricket well there is there is definitely there is but uh, it's more uh, help from the corporate sector is required, you know, and the non-Olympic, uh, uh, the Olympic discipline, sorry. So the cricket was the only discipline where they were put, putting in all the money. Now, if you see Kabaddi, if you see even hockey to, a, to some extent, the money is coming in. It's going to take some time before they realize that, okay, it's not only cricket in the country. There are other uh, sports also that we have to look after. Look at badminton, you know, uh, uh, you know the badminton players are doing well they all have sponsors and they're making a decent amount of money and when is shooting starting when is shooting started in india starting starting when do you expect uh, again? it's already started it's already started the cap for the olympians have already started yeah, yeah. so they're already uh, uh, training at the range and not only the olympians but people who are part of the core group core group is you know people who are part of the core group for the indian team so they're all competing the kilo india Shooters, they also uh, training. So shooting already started. See, and how are they taking the precautions? You know, with Sorry? this COVID. How see, are the they taking? See, the shooting Sorry. is not a contact sport. Okay, so they, yeah, so they're maintaining distance, and they're shooting. It's not that you know. I mean, you're coming in contact with somebody. So certain SOPs have been put in place wherein uh, they're shooting in a certain way, wherein they don't come in contact with each other. So it's okay. Initially, it was difficult when the range was shut because shooting is something, you know, you can't do at your home other than air rifle and air pistol. You know, otherwise, you'll be, your neighbors would be falling down the roof, you know. But sharing, so, uh, sharing the rifle and the guns and all that, I mean, is there a proper... We don't, like, no, no. We don't share guns. Okay. So everybody has individual equipment. Nobody shares guns. I understand what you're saying because if you're sharing equipment and all that, so, you know, it can be... Uh, not right, but everybody has their because it's custom made. You know the grips are made in a certain manner. But whether it's rifle, whether it's shotgun or pistol, so you really can't share it. Okay, that's good. So, which, according to you, is the biggest moment uh, of India uh, in sports? Well, it's a very difficult question. <laughs> I would still say uh, uh, in Germany when uh, India was playing uh, Germany in the final and Adolf Hitler was watching the match and he saluted them. Can't get bigger than that. Not easy to get him to salute the Indian team. That's true. So, and uh, do you think, uh, do you think the education... Hanshan, the Hanshan, in fact, he saluted the Hanshan that time. So I think that was probably the biggest moment for uh, Indian sport. That's brilliant. And do you think education and sports go hand in hand? Definitely. It's very important. You have to be very smart to win. Like uh, education in academics and education in sports. Yes. And do you think that 
uh, you know, it should be compulsory uh, and CBSC and they should do something about it. It's, because it's, it's very, yeah, yeah, it's very important. And a lot of people have been talking about this. So, right. uh, yeah, because we, it's, see, sports is not only just, it's not a recreational activity anymore. Exactly. It's become a lifestyle for everyone. I mean, during the COVID times, if you would go out six o'clock in the morning, you see how many people have started walking and the amount of bicycle which was sold during the COVID time, you know. People have realized that, you know, it's very important to take care of your health. And uh, it's, it's only in India, we never used to give a lot of emphasis to this. And you look at countries like Australia, 3.30, the offices are shut, everybody is out playing. Whether it's Singapore or whether it's Japan, during the lunch break, they come out, do their stretching, everything. So we're getting there. Look at the Western world. But in India, it was not given too much of importance. But I think it's changing for the good. Yeah, I hope uh, it should. It should bring in better results also. The thought process to be changing. You are also known uh, to be called, uh, you call a spade a spade. But uh, you also suffered because of that. Uh, for speaking the truth, always. So what are your thoughts on that? See, in life, we have to make our own path. I chose to make one. And then you define your goal. And it's very important to define your goals in life. So you never sit in a bus or a train or a plane without knowing where it's going. So if I was in a position when I defined my goal, and I was in a path where I knew where I was going and somebody would come and block it. So what would I do? Either I would just go on the side or take the person who's blocked it heads on. I did that and a lot of people don't like it. So I don't want to get into too much of controversy. Everybody has their own health. Yes. Yeah, so, but, yeah, so, but I've, I've taken on the sports ministry, I've taken on the federation, I've taken on everyone. I've done all that. Uh, unfortunately, a lot of people don't do that and always tell, and this is while I was competing, not when I was not competing. Right. And I was called and I said, why are you so uh, vocal about things? I said, because something is wrong, is wrong. Right. So, and a lot of us, a lot of us, a lot of sports, also, we don't speak because we're scared of the system. You know, because at times uh, we've seen that, you know, they come back to you maybe after six months or, you know, I mean, they're very vindictive and especially in sports, people have been very vindictive. So, you know, everybody's scared. I wasn't. So I was taught as a child that never be scared about anything. So, you know, if you think it's, it's, it's right, it's right. If it's wrong, it's wrong. Being a Sikh, very turbulent. So, you know, our Guruji is a <laughs> True. So, but you, uh, you're such a great shooter yourself. So why didn't you continue? Uh, playing uh why did you retire so early uh well uh, you know i gave in what uh what seven eight years of my life in something and i kind of got bored of you know because competing if, if you can't give 100 percent, it's better to leave it you know when i was giving 100 percent, i was winning no point going there and just to travel abroad and you know just being part of the indian team giving a 70 percent, not winning just for the sake of traveling and you know no point so I realized that, you know, it's time that, you know, because after a certain age, you can't give you 100%. The youngsters were doing well, you know, they would uh, put in much more effort than what I was doing. So I realized it's time, you know, that you should leave it gracefully rather than, you know, being thrown out of the team. That's true. That's and, true. I, and I feel it's always better to, you know, leave something, you know, when you're the top rather than, you know, leave a sport, you know, when you're like, you know, crawling and, you know, when you're tasked to, like, you're kicked out. So it's always better. That's really nice. So, uh, before I let you go, uh, do you have any untold story that you would like to share with the audience? With all of us? Uh, Something well, that is not said. Well, <laughs> From no, there's, there's, there, 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 there's so many stories and so many stories. I mean, you ask me specific about what? I mean, this. No, I mean, anything. But, uh, I mean, you know, I'm a very like good storyteller. I mean, I can go on and tell stories. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, yeah, so like a while, well, we used to have a lot of fun, you know, when we used to be competing and everything. And uh, especially, uh, uh, you know, uh, I mean, I was quite a prankster, to be very frank. 
and always used to pay some of the other frank. So done a lot of all that, you know. And uh, I've even locked people in the room. <laughs> there was one of my senior teammates. Uh, he used to always bully me. And we were going for official training, which is one day before the competition. And he happened to be in the room, and I, uh, I was sharing the room with him. I took both the keys out and I locked the room. And did that. then I had the card uh, key, that other key. You know, I locked it from outside. Yeah. And he was he happened to be quite a serious sports person. So yeah, like and that. And how long was it? How long was he locked in the room? When did the anybody? Whole do? The whole day. <laughs> The, till the housekeeping came in. Housekeeping journey comes at about afternoon. I, I mean, they used to come at about two o'clock, three o'clock. <laughs> so seven o'clock to three o'clock, he was knocking and nobody <laughs> opened it. Yeah, so that was, yeah, but then they got through, it was me. So it was a little bit of trouble for me at that time. Absolutely. Must have been hilarious. <laughs> yeah. Well, if somebody troubles you, you know how to get back to them. Yeah, that's true. That's true. <laughs> And what would you like to tell the audience at this time to be safe and to be, you know, your thoughts? Well, yeah, well I uh, see we've been in lockdown for about uh, seven, eight months now. And I think the festival season is coming. I was listening to uh, the Prime Minister Modi yesterday also. He said the same thing because, you know, now is the time that we need to take more care. And I see people have become very complacent and they're out and, you know, they're not even wearing the mask and all that. So I would just say, uh, stay home and be careful don't just venture out for the sake of it and this is a time that you know we need to be even more careful because of the weather first of all you know we'll be getting into winters and i'm not sure the, the uh, virus is going to die i think it's going to get even stronger uh, this is what i've been reading in the newspaper and uh, just stay safe and you know keep the kids inside and don't uh, venture too much out True, because the virus is spreading and it's yeah. not going down. So we have yeah. to be very, very careful. Absolutely. Yeah. About each other also, you know. Yeah. yeah. So, great. It was great. Great talking to you, Ranjan. Thank, Take care. Thank, thank, and you. Stay thank safe. you. Thank you. All and right. all the best. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.